another ultra mega power project company has sought higher tariffs to keep its plants financially viable. Reliance Power has followed Tata Power and Adani Power to the CERC seeking a hike in the tariffs for power from its Sasan and Krishnapatnam plants. Mehek joins us with more details on that. Mehek, it's been quite an apathy of a situation where thousands of crores of important power projects have remained stuck. Little has been done by the government so far. What is the petition really, the latest of the three petitions, talking about? Well, really, it's a sad uh, state of affairs. We've seen Tata Power go to CERC, and now uh, with the second uh, ultra mega power project, which was supposed to go online, which is Reliance Power Sasan UMPP, which is ready. Uh, they've also moved, uh, filed a petition with the CERC, and not just uh, for Sasan, it's also for the second uh, UMPP of Reliance Power, which is Krishna, uh, Krishna, uh, Krishna Patnam in AP, Andhra Pradesh. Now, they filed this petition uh, to the CERC asking for a fuel pass through. This is something that Tata Power has also done for Mundra and Adani, remember, power, though it is not an ultra mega power project, it's still a 4000 megawatt project in Gujarat, uh, in Mundra again, uh, that's again also with CRC. So, literally, you are seeing all the major private players who are going to add about 60% of capacity in these coming five years, move, go to, go to the regulator uh, for investments up to 20,000 crore. Remember, each of these UMPPs, uh, they are investing about 20,000 crore each, uh, and it is stuck in regulation again. So, CERC, of course, uh, has a lot at this point in time, uh, all eyes on CERC. Remember, even the Delhi High Court has said that they will be looking at what the CERC says, uh, because remember, Krishna Patnam, uh, uh, Reliance Power also moved uh, the Delhi High Court uh, for the Krishna Patnam uh, UMPP as well. 30th Jan is when CERC will take up the maintainability of both these petitions. Mehak, even in the case of uh, the Tata Power on the previous petitions, the CRC, as we understand, has already concluded a while ago, isn't it? It's hearings in the matter. We are still awaiting an order, isn't it? Well, absolutely. The hearing in the matter is still going on. Uh, as far as the maintainability of those petitions are concerned, that uh, they've accepted. CRC said that definitely the private players have a point here and the hearing is going on. So, uh, essentially, with these two new petitions also coming up, uh, really, my guess is that, see, uh, again, it's on the same lines, really, uh, that uh, Tata Power as well as Adani Power had filed. Uh, so, the maintainability will again come up on 30th of January when CRC will decide whether they should bunch these together and begin hearing. Uh, for both of them. But really, the grey area here will be one point where CRC will seek clarification uh, on uh, whether CRC should hear this or the Delhi High Court because, uh, you know, simultaneously two regulators uh, will not be able to hear the same case. So that is something that uh, they will be seeking clarity on from the company. All right, Mehek. Also joining me on the show is Senior Supreme Court Lawyer C.A. Sundaram. Mr. Sundaram, thank you very much uh, for joining us on the show. Uh, we've already had two ultra mega power players approach the CRC. Now we have a third. Now moving away from the specifics of these cases, how do you see this issue really playing out? There's thousands of crores of rupees involved, stuck. Is this an issue, do you think, where these contentious issues have passed through or the government trying to facilitate rather than taking a view that, look, you know, just let's leave this to contracts. Let's not try and uh, interfere in this. Do you think the the stakes involved are so high that you should see this playing out in a more positive way than it has so far. You know, there are two aspects to this whole issue. One is to be purely legalistic about these things. And the other is to take a more pragmatic view of what actually is happening. Uh, let's understand that these power projects is really a two-way transaction. On the one hand, it's a vital infrastructural necessity for the country. On the other hand, obviously, the power sector players are looking in it from a purely commercial sense also, naturally so. When you look at it both ways, you find that no contract will ever work unless it is profitable to both sides. Any contract which ends up being entirely one-sided at any stage, even in the implementation or otherwise, you will find invariably breaks. And then the whole purpose of the contract is lost. Now, there was the purpose of the CERC coming into play in fixing tariffs for the very reason that it was felt that this tariff issue in any power sector issue in, can always give rise to various complexities. 
You see, you have too many variable costs. Cost of raw materials, you have cost of the coal, you have the cost of the imports. You have so many variable costs. Now, something like that, to be able to finalize anything with such precision, that it can be pursued without moving from it at all, is really expecting too much. Because if a power project proponent is going to find that it is a continuous loss for him, obviously he is not going to see it through. Nobody profits by it. The government doesn't profit by it because the infrastructure doesn't come up. What was contemplated does not happen. This is not merely a question of largest. It's a question of two parties to a contract trying to make the contract work to the mutual benefit. And I feel that especially on the issue of pass-through and other such issues which have come up before CERC and which are coming up, I think a pragmatic view has to be taken. And if government feels that it is the contract and the letter of the contract, then the whole issue is what is the CERC there for? The CERC has to look at tariff fixation to a great extent to see that tariff is also not unreasonable on one side, to be totally pro the project proponent. On the other hand, at the same time, it does give him a reasonable return. Because if you don't see both sides of it, no project is really going to take off or continue. Nobody is in business to make a loss. Right. Mr. Sundaram, you used an important word, pragmatic. Do you believe that this is not about a particular company or a project, but one across the board? There are multiple players who are facing the same problem. And do you therefore think that the government should perhaps adopt a pragmatic approach in this rather than go by the book on this? I mean, force majeure is what they would legally call it. Do you think it is a fit case for that? I do believe so. And let me tell you why. It is important because if it is found that there is undue profiteering by the project companies, the government is very right in sitting down and saying, look, this is not an issue where you can unduly profit because that's not in the public interest. At the same time, if satisfied that the cost is such that to even give a reasonable profit so that it's worthwhile for the power company to continue, there has to be a certain amount of give by the government I think it is necessary because otherwise the entire industry will go into doldrums and the whole purpose of starting these power projects is lost. 